Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Desso and welcome back to another video. I had realized recently that I had not actually talked about myself and my introduction to CS and how I like to in-game lead, so I think what I'm going to do is just that. I'm going to talk about myself, talk about my introduction to CS, and kind of um, where I am right now as an in-game leader and where I want to see myself in the future. So. Starting off with the history, uh, I started playing CS in 2017. Uh, my friend Zenyatta introduced me to it, and we basically played MM on and off for about a year. Um, then in 2018, very famously at the start of the year, Cloud9 came back from a 15-11 deficit and won the E-League Boston Major. That was probably the craziest thing that I've ever seen in my life. So at the time, so what I had done was I got a very unhealthy obsession with CSGO after that. I dove headfirst. I was watching all the pro games. I was playing a ton of CS. I was playing like six to eight hours a day. Um, I was in university at this time. I would literally come home from my lectures. I would go to my computer and I would play Counter-Strike um, from like 5 6 p.m whenever i got home from my lectures to probably midnight uh, and then do it all again the next day and then during my breaks reading week winter break whatever my friends and yada and i would literally get up in the mornings and we would grind monday to friday 8 a.m to 4 p.m as if we had a fucking day job to play counter-strike like that's that is <laughs> how bad my obsession was um and obviously, because I was playing so much and I invested so much of my time into it, uh, along with school being kind of stressful, um, I burnt out and I took a very long gap of playing Counter-Strike. Um, and I came back to CS just in time, like I was watching the pros, rather, I should say. I was watching all the tier one events and keeping up kind of, this was Astralis's peak, like they were winning back-to-back -back majors, they were doing very well. Um, and kind of where I ended up was I got to watch Alexi B's rise to tier one, because to me at the time, Ents was a team with nobodies. I mean, Al Alu was probably the only one that I knew of, but that's kind of from watching highlight videos and knowing, uh, kind of just retrospectively about all the pros that used to play. So I knew Alu, but I didn't know any of the other players. So to me, this roster was like brand new on the rocket come up. Like they were doing very, very well. Um, they were in a major final and then they were like competing and taking on and beating tier one teams. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And a lot of the name that kept popping up all the time was Alexi B and his calling and how he's taking this team to the next level. So that's kind of where my IGL itch kind of started because I was like, oh, this guy must be really good at the, like understanding the game if he's able to take nobodies into tier one CS and competing. Uh, from there, uh, he got kicked uh, after the 2019 Star Ladder Major, and I was like, wow, like that's kind of brutal. Like he was your best shot at getting tier one CS, and now you just cast him off to the side and kind of vindication. Ents kind of sucked after they kicked them, which I was like, wow, that, that makes sense. So I kept up with Tier 1 CS while Alexi was doing whatever it was. And then late 2019, he signed with OG, and I basically dove into Counter-Strike all over again. I started studying and game leading, specifically Alexi's himself. I started looking at the games. I was looking at what defaults were, what strats were, and kind of like... I was listening to all the interviews with like Glaive, Kerrigan, Alexi, because those were the three big names. Uh, Blame F was another big one. 2019's Complexity, anyone? Like that was a crazy ass roster. Um, so I was I was watching a lot of those types of uh, in-game leaders. So I had started to develop. Um, like into myself as an IGL, like I was really only calling in matchmaking or doing some face it five, uh, five man stacks where we were, I was just rudimentary calling like, hey, let's go A, let's go B, uh, the very basic smoke calls, if anything, uh, maybe a molly here or there because I still wasn't up to date with my utility. Um, and what I had tried to do, uh, if you guys can hear the tapping, I don't know what sort of construction is going on outside my apartment, but it's fucking loud. 
Um, it's also December 19th. What kind of construction are you guys doing in December? Anyways, that's on a side tangent. So the type of in-game leading I was doing was very, very rudimentary. Um, and then I started getting more into it. I started to understand Counter-Strike a little bit more. And I wanted my fair shot of in-game leading. I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to do it. Uh, and that idea was uh, that I wanted to be more default heavy. And that's kind of the IGL that I've kind of developed into right now, um, where it's it's easy as a new IGL to just call strats all the time. Out of spawn, just say, guys, let's go B, let's molly this, 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 and just list off a whole bunch of different things, and absolutely no one on your team will know what utility you're needing to throw. They don't know the lineups, they don't know the stuff, so a lot of the onus is on you and maybe the one other person in your party that knows how to throw utility. So that wasn't my ideal for in-game leading. What I had adopted instead was the default heavy, where my emphasis um, and even currently right now is getting a ton of map control by being in tradable positions, working in kind of a buddy system where we would say, let's do overpass for an example. My A overpass default is to fight for party control. And then once you have party control, we would post one player up at party to hold the kind of push from divider. Then two other players would scale long into long bathrooms, clear out that entire portion of the map up until party. So now we have half of the A side basically covered. Then from that, we would have the person that posted on a party, we would have him and one other person clear out a connector with the guy that was sitting bottom con. We would clear out connector. Now we own three quarters of A. Then as a double buddy system, we would basically clear out uh, the sands slash banana area and inside bathroom, but we wouldn't peek onto the site, is kind of how I would ideally see an overpass A default set up as. We would use utility to push the CTs out of position, and then with that information, take those early fights, take a lot of map control, and once we had the map control, we would execute onto a site. I learned very quickly that, unfortunately, that is not how I can call an ESCA open, because people in ESCA open, um, they get a little trigger happy. Uh, so even on our team, like, you know, some people might over aggro, some people might uh, do whatever. They just weren't able to play at maybe a little bit of a slower pace that I had hoped for. But at the same time, we weren't practicing, so it's not fair for me to expect that. The other, the bigger portion of that, actually, is the fact that people in ESCA open treat open as kind of face it 1.5, where it's just a step above a little bit more coordination, but that means all the pug tendencies are still there and all of the CTs love to push all the time. So kind of the downside of my, uh, my default calling and that caught us off a lot was we would go for the space and then the CTs would immediately re-aggro. They wouldn't re-aggro with utility that would kind of give them away. They would literally just wide swing into your angles like psychopaths and take the fights and went out because it caught us all off by surprise. Um, and that's kind of where it fell apart because if we were re-aggroed on and we weren't expecting to get re-aggroed on, we were expecting a little bit more uh, respect, uh, we kind of got lost. So what I ended up having to adjust was rather than going for map control right away, we would get a section of map control and we would literally just plant our asses there and watch for 10 to 15 seconds because map control in open makes the CTs very uneasy and they would almost always re-aggro for info. So what I ended up doing was I would say, hey, let's post up and party, let's just wait. And if the opportunities presented themselves and they would get us or come to us and we would get them, then that's even better. But let's go back to my ideal sense of in-game leading here. I would, so once we had that default like map control setup, we would then go into the executes. So whatever picks we had, we would scramble rotations, we would, uh, or we would get picked and then we would adjust uh, late game. So once I had an understanding of 
how the CTs are playing and how we can push them off through our defaults, then I would kind of go into a little bit more of the strat heavy. Okay, you know what? They're playing one divider. Let's molly over the hedge. Let's molly divider while someone's posted up on party so that he swings into the opera's angle. Or let's wait. We got to pick on we got to pick on the guy that went party. The guy fell back to sight. Let's sweep the let's sweep this front side of um, sands and bathroom completely. Ignore long. Uh, just have someone holding it, and then let's execute onto a. Let's smoke dumpster. Let's smoke uh, bank, and then molly dice and molly truck and go from there. Like that's kind of how I would call. Um, and it worked a little bit, and sometimes it didn't because you know that that type of uh, cohesion and team play takes a lot of practice. And unfortunately, as I said in a previous video, we weren't able to practice as much as I had wanted. So the room for the room for improvement with this roster was there. It's just unfortunately we were never never able to kind of execute it the way that I had wanted it. Um, so that's kind of where I am now for my in-game leading. I default to gain map control and gain an understanding of how the CTs are playing, then I would kind of go into a little bit of the strat approach, but my main my main focus is almost always the default. I almost never call out of spawn unless it's an eco or an anti-eco, and I have an idea of how to counter it because I've seen something in, in their demos or I saw something uh, that they've been doing like kind of repetitively uh, through their gun rounds through our defaults. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I'm almost starting my my rounds off in a default, and then from that, depending on the picks we get or if we get picked, adjust mid round and go from there. And our mid rounds, you guys have seen on Mirage um, and Inferno, were actually really really good. So I just need to be able to translate from Mirage and Inferno because those are you know the pug maps into other maps such as Overpass, um, Vertigo, Nuke, uh, Ancient. And thank fuck, Dust Two is not in the queue anymore. But for us now, our permaban is probably going to be Anubis. Um, so yeah, going going forward and looking towards the future and my goals for the game, I think I have what it takes to in-game lead at the main level of Counter Strike. I am mechanically good enough to be able to hold my own against. ESCA main teams, I think. If I had a team around me that was able to put in as much effort that I was willing to put into the game, and they had the initiative to take on their own responsibilities as well, I think that I could see myself in main in the next six to eight months. This is definitely something that's doable, and kind of what my own goal is, actually, <laughs> is to be in main in six to eight months. I just... For me, it's not so much of a, of a, um, how can I put this? It's not like a, oh, you know, if I don't make main, it's going to be the end of the world. It's just that I know I'm good enough, so I want to see myself at least make it there once. Whether that be through open and then qualifying directly to main, or through, you know what, we go IM, we get relegated to, sorry, we go from open, we qualify for IM, and then from IM to main. Like, that's definitely, that's definitely an option, but I think that's my goal for right now. Um, where the future for Counter-Strike takes me after I make main is another story. Um, maybe, you know what, I make advanced with a team where I get scouted to another main roster that makes advanced or whatever, and then go from ECL, but it just, it, it all depends. And the future is wide open for Counter-Strike, and I'm definitely willing to put in the effort uh, because I feel like I have a good understanding of the game, and I feel like if I have the right pieces around me that want to put in the work, we can get it done. I hope this video was kind of informative uh, to what my history, my current in-game leading, and what my future wants, I want my future to look like. Uh, I hope this video was kind of fun, something a little bit different. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Let me know what kind of other videos you're wanting to see. Um, and honestly, we're going to kind of go from there. Uh, so thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for all the love and support, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.